When working with copper tubing, one of the most important things you're going to be able to do and know how to do is flaring. Okay, now we know that copper piping material is commonly used to carry refrigerant from one component to another. We know that it's relatively easy to work with and when installed properly, it will provide a leak-free system through which system fluids and gases will flow. Copper piping is also used heavily in oil. Okay, in oil lines and oil fuel delivery systems. In the air conditioning and refrigeration field, ACR tubing and piping is the number one choice among service contractors and installation companies. The primary reason for this is that ACR piping material is dehydrated, sealed, and pressurized with nitrogen to keep the interior of the pipe clean and dry. Copper piping material is used in the refrigeration field is measured by the outside diameter. Okay, OD, outside diameter. This means that the opening in the pipe is smaller than the size classification of the pipe. In the plumbing field, piping material is measured by its nominal or inside diameter. So again, for ACR piping, okay, that we use in refrigeration and air conditioning, the, it's measured by its outside diameter, OD. Okay, plumbers, the material is measured by its nominal or inside diameter. So when we look at copper tubing, okay, a half inch nominal tubing is actually five eighths inch ACR. Okay, it's the same tubing, it's just measured in two different ways. Half inch ACR tubing actually fits inside half inch nominal tubing, okay? Half inch ACR tubing is outside diameters. Now, if you look closely at this, okay, five eighths inches outside versus half inch inside. Well, half inch is the same as four eighths. So there's a one eighth inch difference between the two sizes. That's for the wall of the pipe. So again, be very careful with tubing sizes when you order and buy tubing. Nominal tubing, okay? is actually measured by inside diameter. That's what the plumbers use. ACR tubing we measure by outside diameter. Copper tubing can be obtained from a wide range of sizes. It can be from an eighth inch to more than four inches. For residential applications, typical pipe sizes will rarely be larger than five eighths inch. Copper piping material is available as either hard drawn or soft drawn. Typically, soft-drawn tubing is used on most residential systems, primarily because of the ease of installation and the reduced number of brazed or soldered joints required to install it. Remember, every time you put a joint in, every time you put a fitting in, you have a chance for a leak. So this is an example of copper tubing, okay? This is how you can actually bend out copper tubing. It comes on a roll, and you bend it slowly and carefully to get it to straighten out. Now, we occasionally need to join two pieces of tubing together without soldering or brazing. One of the easiest ways to do this and one of the best ways to do this is the use of flares. Now, you got to be careful because flaring is not the use of compression fittings. Flaring, you actually have to bend the metal pipe or the tubing to help create the flare. Okay, a flaring block is used to secure a section of tubing while it's being flared. The end of the tubing that's being worked on should stick out of the block from the beveled or angled end. A flaring block has multiple holes, so it can be used to secure tubing of different sizes. This is an example of a flare block. Okay, and most likely you have one of these in your toolkit someplace, and it may look like this, it may look a little bit different, but the key is, okay, that you can always see, let me draw on this, right here, you can actually see in this hole the beveled ends, okay? And you see that the pipe is sticking slightly above the beveled ends. Width of a quarter is a good, or a nickel, is a good measurement of how far that sticks out. Don't forget to put the flare nut on before you put this into the flare block. Once you flare that pipe, you can no longer get the flare nut on it. The flaring yoke is used in conjunction with the flare block. The flaring yoke creates the flare, which is a 45 degree angle, roughly, at the end of a section of copper tubing. This flared portion of the tubing will rest against a male portion of the fitting being connected and is held in place with the flare nut. So again, this is the flare yoke. You see that the tubing sticking out of the flare block. Okay, you see that the triangle size, 
the sort of triangle wedge that's going to go down inside that pipe, okay, which is right there. You put the flare yoke on, you twist it slightly to lock it in place, and that the triangle has to be exactly centered into the tip of that pipe. Don't start putting pressure on that before it's not exact before it's exactly centered. The yoke is secured around the block after the tubing has been placed in the block. The flare is created by tightening the handle of the yoke, which puts it the cone of the yoke into the tubing. So again, what you're doing is you're basically creating a beveled end or a flared out end on the piece of pipe. The flare connection is used to join a section of soft copper drawn tubing to a male threaded flare fitting. Now again, when you look at this, you see that the beveled end of this fitting right there exactly matches the bevel of this flare. That's why it's really important to get this correctly into the flare block and don't do it in an angle. It has to be a straight line. So when all things go together, you have your flare fitting and the flared copper and that nut fits exactly over that flare and pulls this down and makes a really good solid seal that will use, last for years. You do not need to use pipe dope or any other sealing on good flared fittings. Okay, several different fittings here shown for copper tubing. If you ever see a fitting with that small copper ring there, okay, that's a compression fitting. We do not want to use those in air conditioning and refrigeration as well as oil. Don't use compression fittings. You only want to use flare fittings of some sort. Okay, there's reducers, there's other fittings, but don't use the compression fittings if you can all, all avoid it.